Hello students, welcome to my channel Learning History Made Easy. In today's video, we will be continuing the points regarding later Vedic period. Before going into the video, if anyone is seeing the channel for the first time or if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and share it with your friends and also click the bell button to receive notifications whenever I upload new videos. So without wasting time, let us get into the video. So today's video, as I have told, is the continuation of uh, points regarding later Vedic period. Later Vedic period. So in later Vedic period, it witnessed significant changes in the political structure. So regarding a later Vedic period, there was a significant uh, change regarding the political structure which were closely related to the growing importance of settled agriculture. So the main thing was in later Vedic period the growing importance of settled agriculture started. Okay, And the consequent social differentiation also started. So there started a kind of social differentiation during the later Vedic period period. Rig Vedic tribal assemblies lost importance. In the early Vedic period that is Rig Vedic period there was tribal assemblies Rig Vedic tribal assemblies that was important during the early Vedic period but in later Vedic period these the Rig Vedic uh, tribal assemblies they lost their importance and royal uh, power that is the power of the king became more important or increased at their cost. The Vidatha completely disappeared. So the Vidatha uh, which was there during the early Vedic period it completely disappeared in the later Vedic period. So Rig Vedic tribal assemblies they lost their importance and they lost their importance at the cost of uh, the royal power that is royal power became more important Vidata completely disappeared during this period now uh, the two assemblies that is a Sabha and Samiti Sabha and Samiti these both continued to hold their ground they both continued like in the early Vedic age Sabha and Samiti continued but their character changed so what was the change in character they were now controlled by chiefs, both Sabha and Samiti. They were now controlled by controlled by chiefs. Both Sabha and Samiti were controlled by chiefs, and rich nobles and women were no uh, no longer sorry. No, they were controlled by chiefs and rich nobles. Okay, rich nobles. Both of them controlled Sabha and Samiti, and women were no longer permitted to sit in Sabha, not allowed to sit in Sabha. So before it was not like that, but here in later Vedic uh, period, women were not allowed to sit in Sabha and both Sabha and Samiti were controlled by chiefs and rich nobles. Sabha was gradually converted into king's court. Later, Sabha came to be converted into king's court. Okay king's court and it uh, becoming an even more exclusive body than earlier okay uh, sabha became an exclusive body it was uh, becoming like a king's court the raja's function now we told that the royal power became very important so the raja's uh, function was now to protect uh, protection okay protect what all he has to protect he has to protect the fields or crops uh, of the agriculturist rather than cattle wealth. So before uh, the cattle wealth was more important but here Raja's function was to protect the fields and crops of the agriculturist rather than the cattle wealth. So all those were some of the changes in the political structure during the later Vedic period. Another significant uh, development associated with this power was the emergence of Janapada. Okay, the emergence of Janapada was also a change during this time. The term Rashtra, okay, the term Rashtra 
uh, which indicates territory that is uh, that also appeared in this period the term the word rashtra which indicates territory also appeared in this period okay appeared in this period traces of election of kings also appear in later vedic text so we can see some uh, uh, in later vedic text referring to election of kings now bali bali means a tribute okay bali or tribute uh, which was actually voluntary in the rigvedic period voluntary in rigvedic period a tribute given to um, the king uh, and all was voluntary during the rigvedic period but in later vedic period it became compulsory later vedic period if we see the change which happened was for the belly or tribute which was voluntary in rigvedic period it became compulsory in later vedic period then the emergence of janapada was also associated with the beginning of rudimentary administrative system we saw that emergence of janapada was there with this there was also a rudimentary administrative system that also developed during this period during this period collection of taxes collection of taxes and attributes both collection of taxes and tributes seem to have become common we told that tributes became compulsory and collection of taxes and tributes became very common in later vedic period and this collection of taxes collection of taxes and tributes this collection was done by bhagaduga okay bhagaduga uh, collection of these taxes were done by bhagaduga and this was deposited with an officer called sangrahirti okay it was collected by bhagaduga and deposited with an officer called as sangrahirti okay that was the officer so that was also a change during the later vedic period the collection of taxes done by bhagaduga and sangrahitri collect uh, it was deposited with sangrahitri okay so that was another change during the later vedic period the king's influence was strengthened by rituals so we said that the king or rajan or the royal power became important and the king's influence the influence of the king was strengthened by rituals strengthened by the performance of rituals so what all rituals were performed by the king so he performed rajasuya sacrifice okay the first sacrifice which was done was rajasuya sacrifice which was supposed to confirm supreme power to him this rajasuya sacrifice was supposed to confirm supreme power supreme power to the king that was the importance of rajasuya sacrifice another sacrifice done by the king was ashwamedha sacrifice ashwamedha sacrifice which meant unquestioned control of an area unquestioned control of an area which the royal horse which the royal horse ran uninterrupted uninterrupted okay so what is it the ashwamedha sacrifice means a, a, a royal horse is left loose and the area where this royal horse uh, run uninterrupted that is without stopping which all areas this royal horse runs uninterrupted those areas come under the control of the king that is an unquestioned control whichever area the royal horse run uninterrupted it comes under the control of the king so that was ashwamedha sacrifice another sacrifice was vajapeya vajapeya sacrifice or vajapeya or it is uh, meaning is chariot race okay vajapeya or chariot race in which royal chariot drawn by a horse was made to win the race against his kinsmen that is royal chariot drawn by a, a horse was made by made to royal chariot was made to win a race against 
kinsman against his kinsman okay so it was a kind of chariot racing in which there was a royal chariot on one side and a kinsman's chariot on other side and this royal chariot was made to win against uh, the uh, against his kinsman so these were the three important sacrifices done by the kings to um, strength uh, to increase his influence that is rajasuya sacrifice ashwamedha sacrifice and vajapeya these were the three important sacrifices now in the discharge of his duties the king was assisted king was helped king was assisted by priest then there was the commander the chief queen chief queen and a few of other functionaries okay and other functionaries functionaries okay so the king in the discharge of his duty was assisted by the priest commander chief queen and other functionaries all these were helping the king in administration and in the lower level of administration lower level of administration was possibly run by village assemblies okay there was village assemblies for the lower level of administration even in later vedic times king did not have standing army there was no standing army same like in the early vedic period here in later vedic period also king did not have standing army and tribal units were mustered in time of war so during the time of wars tribal units were mustered during the time of wars this period witnessed the beginning of territorial kingdom so here in later vedic period we can see the beginning of territorial kingdoms kingdoms and wars fought for territory territorial kingdom and war fought for territory for winning over territory so this was a change during the later vedic age there was territorial kingdoms and also we can see wars which were fought for territory so before moving into the next points let us go through the points which we have studied till now later vedic period evolution of political institutions later vedic period witness certain significant changes in the political structure which was closely related to the growing importance of settled agriculture and the consequent social differentiation rig vedic tribal assemblies lost importance and royal power increased at their cost the vidatha completely disappeared sabha and samiti continued to hold their ground but their character changed they were now controlled by chiefs and rich nobles and women were no longer permitted to sit in the sabha sabha was gradually converted into the king's court becoming an even more exclusive body rather than earlier the raja's function was now to protect the fields or crops of the agriculturist rather than cattle wealth another significant development associated with this period was the emergence of janapada the term rashtra which indicates territory first appeared in this period traces of election of the king appears in later vedic texts bali or tribute the voluntary in the rigvedic period became compulsory the emergence of the janapada was also associated with the beginning of rudimentary administrative system during this period collection of taxes and tribute seems to have become common it was collected by bagaduga and deposited with an officer called sangrihitri the king's influence was strengthened by rituals he performed the rajasuya sacrifice which was supposed to confirm supreme power to him he performed the ashwamedha which meant unquestioned control over an area in which the royal horse ran uninterrupted he also performed the vajapeya or the chariot race in which the royal chariot drawn by a horse was made to win the race against his kinsmen in the discharge of his duties the king was assisted by the priest the commander the chief queen and a few other high functionaries at the lower level the administration was possibly run by village assemblies even in later vedic times the king did not have a standing army tribal units were mustered in times of war this period witnessed the beginning of territorial kingdoms and war fought for territory now let us move on to the next point 
that is religious and philosophical ideas during later Vedic age. Okay, religion. In the later Vedic period, the upper dobe emerged as a cradle of Aryan culture under the Brahmanical influence. So in the later Vedic period, later Vedic age, we can see that uh, the upper dobe, upper dobe area, it emerged as a cradle of Aryan culture, cradle of Aryan culture culture and uh, under the Brahmanical influence. So here there was Brahmanical influence during this time. Okay, Brahmanical influence. At the way, all the Vedic literature seems to have been compiled in this area in the land of Kuru Panchala. So if you see the area of Kuru Panchala, uh, if we see the area, we can see that all the Vedic uh, literature Okay, all the Vedic literature seems to have been compi compiled in this area in the land of Kuru Panchala. Now the two outstanding, if we see the basic idea of uh, uh, later Vedic religion, the two outstanding Rig Vedic gods, okay, Rig Vedic gods that is Indra and Agni, they lost their former importance, okay, they lost their former importance. It is not that they are not important, but they lost their former importance. And Prajapati, okay, Prajapati, the creator, <coughs> sorry, Prajapati, the creator came to occupy the supreme position. So the supreme position was occupied by the creator Prajapati and the Rig Vedic gods um, lost their former importance. Now Rudra, Rudra, the god of animals, god of animals and Vishnu, these both gods rose to importance. They, they both became important during the later Vedic period. Now some objects began to be worshipped as symbols of divinity. So some, they also started to worship some objects as symbols of divinity. Okay. Some objects started to be worshipped as symbols of divinity. Signs of idolatry also appear in later Vedic time. That is um, idolatry, uh, idol worship also appears during the later Vedic time. So some objects started to be worshipped as symbols of divinity. That is divine uh, objects. And later there was some signs of idolatry. In later Vedic times idol worship also seems to have uh, developed. Now social orders came to have their own deities. Now some social orders, um, orders they had their own deities. Okay, social orders they came uh, seems to have their own deities, deities. Okay, and uh, Pushan, if you see Pushan, who supposed to tend uh, the tend to cattle. Okay, Pushan who supposed to tend to cattle came to be regarded as the god of Shudras. Okay, god of Shudras. And the mode of worship also changed considerably. Other than this, the mode of worship also uh, changed considerably during the later Vedic period. Sacrifices became more important than prayers. Sacrifices became more important than prayers. And sacrifices involved Killing of animals also on a large scale. Okay, Killing of animals also was done as a part of sacrifices. The guest, okay, guest was known as Gogna or one who fed cattle. One who, sorry, one who fed on cattle. So killing of animals was done as a part of sacrifice and guest uh, was known as Ghogna that is one who fed on cattle. So that shows uh, how the animal sacrifice existed during this period. Now uh, reg um, if you continue with the points, sacrifices were accompanied by formulae that had to be carefully enunciated by the sacrificer. So if you have to do a sacrifice, it was accompanied by a formula, okay, which had to be carefully enunciated, enunciated by the sacrificer. The person performing the sacrifice have to enunciate this uh, formula correctly. 
so that was the importance of sacrifice and the sacrificer the person who is doing the sacrifice was known as yajamana okay the sacrificer was known as yajamana uh, the or the performer of yajna performer of yajna the person who does sacrifice was known as yajamana or performance performer of yajna the formulae and sacrifices were invented adopted and elaborated by priest so now this in this sacrifice the uh, the sacrifice and the formulae all these things the sacrifice and the formulae both of these things were invented invented and elaborated elaborated by whom it was both invented and elaborated by priest called brahmanas okay priest called brahmanas were those who invented and elaborated the formulae and the sacrifices and these brahmanas claimed a monopoly of priestly knowledge and expertise they claimed to be the uh, sole um, controller of these uh, sacrifices in addition to cows now regarding the uh, sacrificial gifts okay sacrificial gifts which all things were given as gifts of sacrifice that is cows gold cloth horses all these were given as sacrificial gifts so in addition to cows gold cloth horses all were given as gifts of sacrifices sometimes the priests claimed portions of territory okay so all these were given as sacrificial gifts means they were given as gifts to these brahmanas and they were given like dakshinas okay dakshinas and sometimes the priest claimed portions of territory also sometimes the priest claimed portions of territory also as dakshina and but the grant of land as sacrifice fees is not well established in a later vedic period but this grant of land grant of land uh, uh, is not well established even though uh, it is said that the priest claimed portions of territory grant of land as sacrificial gifts is not well established in later vedic period now towards the end of vedic period uh, there was a strong reaction against this <coughs> priestly dominance towards the end of um, this period there was a strong uh, reaction reaction against the dominance of the priest against priestly priestly dominance so i as i have already said that brahmanas uh, they claimed monopoly of the priestly knowledge and expertise but after during the end of the spirit people started reacting against this priestly dominance they started reacting against the cults and rituals cults rituals all these things people started reacting especially in the land of panchala and videha all these um, reactions were um, mostly in the land of panchala and videha now next we will see about the rituals and practices rituals and practices the ancient aryans were highly religious but their religion was simple okay ancient aryans if you see ancient aryans their uh, religion was uh, very simple religion was they were very religious people but their religion was very simple they were impressed by forces of nature okay basically they were impressed by forces of nature such as sun fire rain wind etc whom they worshiped as gods and during that time varuna and indra varuna and indra were the chief gods though aryans worship several nature gods yet they believed in one god which is the source of all power they believed in one god which is the source of all power the aryan way of worship was very simple they had not built any temples there was no uh, temples as such for worship there was no temple is done these days not did they worship idols they recited mantras or hymns in the open air and yajna was the major religious duty yajna or sacrifice was their major religious duty now if you see the progress of agriculture during this time agriculture 
Agriculture was uh, the main means of uh, subsistence during the later Vedic period and we get some idea that ploughing was uh, done with wooden ploughshare. Wooden ploughshare was used for ploughing the land which could function in the light soil of upper Gangetic plain. During the later Vedic period, rice and wheat became the chief crop and in subsequent time wheat became the staple food of people in Punjab and western UP. And there was also the rise of different arts and crafts, okay, arts and crafts also developed during this time. And regarding uh, arts and crafts, you see smiths and smelters. And smelters had something to do with ironworks. If you see the words smiths and uh, smelters, they had something to do with ironworks. So we know that ironworks were also done. Weaving was also done and it was mostly done by women. Weaving was done but um, practiced on a wide scale. Other than weaving, there was a leather work. Leather work was done, pottery, then uh, carpentry, all these were done during this period. And during this later Vedic period, if you see the uh, pottery, there was four types of pottery in the later Vedic period. That is black and red ware pottery, black and red ware pottery, then black slipped ware pottery, black slipped ware pottery, then painted grey ware pottery, painted grey ware pottery and one more I will write here that is red ware pottery. Four types of pottery were there, black and red ware pottery, black slipped ware pottery, painted grey ware pottery and red ware pottery. So all these are the details regarding later Vedic age. So we will just go through the points again. Religious and philosophical ideas, later Vedic period. In the later Vedic period, the upper dobe emerged as a cradle of the Aryan culture under Brahminical influence. All the Vedic literature seems to have been compiled in this area in the land of the Kuru Panchalas. The two outstanding Rig Vedic gods, Indra and Agni, lost their former importance and Prajapati, the creator, came to occupy the supreme position. Rudra, the god of animals and Vishnu, rose to eminence. Some objects began to be worshipped as symbols of divinity. Signs of idolatry appear in later Vedic times. Social orders came to have their own deities. Pushan, who was supposed to tend to cattle, came to be regarded as a god of the Shudras. The mode of worship changed considerably and sacrifices became more important than prayers. Sacrifices involved the killing of animals on a large scale. The guest, who was known as Gogna or one who fed on cattle, Sacrifices were accompanied by formulae that had to be carefully enunciated by the sacrificer. The sacrificer was known as a Yajamana, the performer of Yajna. These formulae and sacrifices were invented, adopted and elaborated by priests called Brahmanas who claimed a monopoly of priestly knowledge and expertise. In addition to cows, gold, cloth and horses were also given as sacrificial gifts. Sometimes a priest claimed portions of territory as Dakshina, but the grant of land as sacrifice fees is not well established in the later Vedic period. Towards the end of the Vedic period began a strong reaction against priestly domination, against cults and rituals, especially in the land of the Panchala and Videha. Rituals and practices, the ancient Aryans were highly religious, but their religion was simple. So here there is a comparison with the ancient Aryan religion. So they were impressed by forces of nature such as the sun, fire, wind whom they worshipped as gods. Varuna and Indra was their chief gods. The Aryans worshipped several nature gods yet they believed in one god who is the source of all power vested with the nature gods. The Aryan way of worship was simple. They had not built any temple as is done these days nor did they worship idols. They recited mantras or hymns in open air yet now was a major part of their religious duty. Agriculture was the chief means of subsistence of the later Vedic people. Ploughing was done with wooden ploughshare which could function in the light soil of the upper Gangetic plains. During the later Vedic period, rice and wheat became their chief crops. 
In subsequent times, wheat became the staple food of the people in Punjab and western UP. Arts and crafts, the later Vedic people saw the rise of diverse arts and crafts. Smiths and smelters had something to do with iron works. Weaving was confined to women but practiced on a wide scale. Leather work, pottery and carpentry made great progress. The later Vedic people were acquainted with four types of pottery, black and red ware, black slipped ware, painted grey ware and red ware. So I hope you have understood all the points regarding the later Vedic period very clearly. If you have any doubt, you can ask in the comment section. And also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Your likes and shares will be of a great encouragement for me to make more and more videos. So I hope to see you all soon in the coming video. Thank you for watching.